Yo, check this out. This may snow the youngest member of Bad Boy. I'm young, I'm pretty, I hit hard, I'm in the best shape of my life. Get ready, everyone, because we're diving deep into the world of hip-hop and controversy. Mays, once the right-hand man of Diddy in the Bad Boy Records era, has opened up about his experiences, shedding light on how he managed to escape what he describes as a deeply troubling situation. With Diddy facing mounting accusations and legal scrutiny, Maze's story adds a new perspective to a complex narrative. And if you think this is just another beef between old collaborators, buckle up, it's a wild ride. Maze and Diddy, known back then as Puff Daddy, were a hip-hop power duo in the 90s. Diddy was a rising producer and label owner, and Maze, a talented 19-year-old from Harlem, was bursting onto the scene with charisma and talent. They were a dream team, riding a wave of fame that felt like living in a dream. Their music, flashy style, and coordinated moves made them the dynamic duo, like Batman and Robin of the hip-hop world. But a lot has changed since then. Flash forward to 2024, and both Mays and Diddy have gone through personal and professional evolutions. Diddy's legacy faces challenges and controversies, while Mays has taken a completely different path. And it all started way back when Mays was just a young rapper hustling through the Harlem streets. Before teaming up with Diddy, Mays was part of a group called Children of the Corn, alongside his cousin Cameron and other local legends like Bloodshed and Big L. But in 1996, Maze's path changed forever when his twin sister, Stassen, introduced him to Cuda Love, who was Biggie Smalls' road manager. Seeing potential in Maze, Cuda took him to a rap convention in Atlanta, where Diddy and Jermaine Dupri were present. When Maze freestyled at the Hard Rock Cafe, he impressed Diddy so much that he offered him a contract on the spot. Mays soon signed with Bad Boy Records, and a legendary partnership was born. The label decided to drop Murder from Mays' stage name to make him more marketable, and it worked. Mays quickly became a sensation, with his easygoing personality, boyish smile, and dimples making him the quintessential ladies' man. His smooth raps and charming style made him one of hip-hop's brightest stars. But this was more than just a name change. Bad Boy Records revamped Maze's entire image and music. Gone were the gritty, street-oriented themes, replaced by a radio-friendly sound tailored for a mainstream audience. And that transformation catapulted Maze to stardom. As Diddy's right-hand man, Maze became an integral part of the Bad Boy brand. The duo coordinated their outfits and moves, creating an unmistakable vibe that dominated music videos and live performances. Their hit single, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, topped the Billboard Hot 100 for 12 weeks, achieving two times platinum status. Mays even wrote the majority of Diddy's solo debut album, Asterix, No Way Out Asterix. After Biggie's death in 1997, Maze was thrust into the spotlight as the new face of Bad Boy Records, playing a key role in hits like Mo Money Mo Problems. In 1997, Maze released his debut album, Asterix Harlem World Asterix, named after his roots and paying homage to the sacrifices of those who came before him. It was an instant success, debuting at No. 1 on the Billboard 200, selling over 270,000 copies in the first week, and eventually going four times platinum. With Asterix Harlem World Asterix, Mays solidified his place as a hip-hop heavyweight, earning a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Album. Following this success, Mays launched his own label, All Out Records, signing his group Harlem World, which included his twin sister Baby Stays and other Harlem-based talent. The group released Asterix, the movement Asterix in 1999, which went gold. Meanwhile, Mays was working on his second album, Asterix, Double Up Asterix, when he stunned everyone by announcing his retirement from rap during an interview with Funkmaster Flex on Hot 97. Mays explained, I don't want to make records, rap on records, or run record companies. Drawing comparisons to late rappers Tupac and Biggie, 
He suggested they also had thoughts of stepping away from the industry, but never acted on them. His decision to step away from hip-hop and become a pastor was a dramatic pivot. Known as Pastor Mason, Mays sought to live a life of faith, leaving the spotlight and chaos of the music world behind. Diddy, the first person Mays confided in about his decision, was surprisingly supportive. I thought he'd be the opposite, but he said, If God told you to do that, you need to do that, Mays recalled. Yet, over time, the two fell out of contact, with Mays sharing that they were no longer on speaking terms. Tensions between Mays and Diddy escalated into a very public feud, with accusations going back and forth. Diddy called Mays a fake pastor, while Mays accused Diddy of being a thief, claiming that Diddy underpaid him for his work. Despite the success of Asterix Harlem World Asterix and writing hit records for Diddy, May says he only saw a small fraction of what he was owed. Puff would go out and party and I'd be in the studio writing the records, May said. I didn't get any respect. Diddy has denied all accusations of financial wrongdoing, stating that he has never stolen from his artists and challenged anyone who believes they were wrong to present proof. He claimed that it was Mays who owed him $3 million. One album, Diddy said, referring to Mays' debut. How much money do you think I owe this guy? Then he became a fake pastor and con people. Mays has counted by saying that many former bad boy artists were either silenced by death or by non-disclosure agreements, preventing them from speaking out. He also accused Diddy of failing to sell him back his music rights for a fair price. When Mays offered Diddy $2 million for his publishing rights, Diddy demanded that Mays match a higher offer from a European buyer. The tension between them only deepened as Mays began dissing Diddy in performances and on social media, keeping the feud alive. Adding to the dark narrative surrounding Diddy is the so-called Puff Daddy curse, a pattern of tragedy following many of those who worked with him. Uptown Records, where Diddy began his career, saw several key figures Andre Harrell, Kim Porter, and Heavy D pass away, leaving some to speculate about a curse around Diddy's associations. Financial dealings between Mays and Diddy have also added fuel to the fire. In the 90s, Diddy purchased Mays's publishing rights for $220,000. Years later, when Mays tried to buy them back for $2 million, Diddy refused unless Mays met an even higher bid. This dispute over rights and finances has left Mays deeply dissatisfied with how he was treated at Bad Boy. Despite leaving Bad Boy, Mays' story didn't end there. He tried to join G-Unit in 2005, but Diddy's $2 million release fee made the move impossible. In 2009, he sought to break free from his contracts by surprising Diddy at a radio station with release papers, which Diddy signed. But it turned out that Mays was only free for a year. Eventually, Mays managed to get out of his bad boy contracts for good in 2012, and he is reportedly now signed with Death Row Records. However, the feud with Diddy continues, and the beef shows no signs of ending. The drama doesn't stop there. Recent news from TMZ revealed that Netflix won a bidding war for 50 Cent's docuseries titled Asterix Diddy Do It?